Hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, this lecture is the first lecture in the Pyrenees series, so uh, let's begin. Uh, the perineum, uh, it's the area that overlies the uh, pelvic outlet, contains the uh, anal orifice uh, posteriorly and the external genitalia uh, anteriorly. It's bounded anteriorly by the pubic arch, uh, the subpubic ligament, uh, on the sides by the conjoined ramus, the ischiopubic ramus and the ischial tuberosities going backwards uh, with the sacrotuberous ligament till we reach the tip of the coccyx posteriorly. So it's the area that overlies the pelvic outlet. These are the same boundaries of the pelvic outlet. I mean the area that's below the pelvic outlet or overlies the pelvic outlet. Now by an imaginary line in the ischial tuberosities, you can divide this area into two triangles, an anterior triangle and a posterior triangle. The posterior triangle is the anal triangle. It contains the anal orifice, as you can see here. And the anterior triangle is the urogenital triangle that contains the external genitalia. Now, the urogenital triangle um, uh, inclines downwards and backwards, uh, the anal triangle inclines, inclines downwards and forwards, so it has an angle that meets in the middle here in the perineal body, in the perineal body in the middle. So these are the two triangles we're going to talk about, uh, the anal triangle and the urogenital triangle. The facial muscles, uh, we will discuss the facial muscles of the male and then compare it to the females. The facial muscles of the male urogenital triangle, it has superficial fascia and deep fascia. And remember uh, the fascia we studied on the anterior abdominal wall, the superficial fascia had, had, had two components, the superficial layer, the campus fascia, and the deep layer was the scarpus fascia. They are extended here to the external genitalia. The campus fascia, the superficial layer of the superficial fascia, uh, was a uh, fatty layer. Now it's changed into, remember, the dartus muscle. This is the dartus muscle here, dartus muscle layer in the skin. It's adherent to the skin. See that? The dartus muscle layer in the uh, scrotum. And remember, it was of sympathetic supply. Okay, this is the superficial layer. The deep layer of the superficial fascia is the extension of coolies of, of, of scarpus fascia and it becomes the membranous layer of coolies fascia on the genitalia. See, this is the deep layer. It's attached laterally to the ischiopubic ramus and the ischial tuberosity. And in the middle um, 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 and posterior attached to the posterior edge of the perineal membrane and to the perineal body, uh, okay, to enclose uh, the erectile tissue uh, in, the, um, in the penis, like the ischiocavernosus and bulbo uh, spongiosus muscles. This is the Cooley's uh, fascia. Now, in some books, they consider that the fascia extends to the scrotum as well. Don't be surprised about that, but actually in most books, it's this layer uh, that confines the erectile tissue of the bulb and, you know, the crury, the beginning of the crury of the uh, penis. Uh, it, it, uh, the, the scarpus fascia, remember, on the lower abdominal wall, it thickened to form the suspensory ligament of penis and clitoris. And the fundiform ligament, uh, which are two bands skirting around the penis uh, to make it suspended, uh, um, um, uh, and attached to the scrotal septum. Um, these are the uh, uh, fascia uh, in, the, um, in the perineum, and the arrangement of fascia in the perineum divides the perineum into uh, spaces, as we will discuss later. Now, the deep fascia, we discussed the superficial fascia, which are the two layers, the deep fascia 
We will begin with the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm. Means the fascia that is below the uh, below the urogenital diaphragm. The urogenital diaphragm is the sphincter urethrae plus the deep transverse perineal muscles. So we are discussing the fascia below these muscles. It's called the perineal membrane. So remember, the perineal membrane is the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm stretches horizontally across the pubic arch as you can see here it doesn't reach, reach the subpubic to, um, angle short of the subpubic angle but stretches on the sides also on the ischiopubic um, uh, rami and the ischial tuberosities has a free posterior edge and the anterior margin thickens to form the transverse perineal ligament transverse perineal ligament so whenever uh, you see a transverse perineal ligament they mean this area the anterior thickened part or edge of the perineal membrane and between this transverse perineal ligament and the subpubic ligament is the deep dorsal vein of of the penis this is the deep dorsal pe uh, vein of the uh, penis passing between the two ligaments of course it corresponds to the deep dorsal vein or the dorsal vein of clitoris in in females okay so this is the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm part of the deep fascia which is the perineal membrane the membrane is pierced by the urethra as you can see uh, uh, here uh, pierced by the ducts of the bulbo-urethral glands, not the glands themselves, because as we mentioned before, the uh, uh, bulbo-urethral gland surrounds the membranous urethra in, in males, and their ducts extends beyond the perineal membrane. They pierce it and uh, open in the bulbous urethra below the perineal membrane. Uh, the dorsal uh, arteries of the penis near the edges and the deep arteries of the penis in each corpora cavernosa uh, pierce also the perineal, perineal uh, membrane and the posterior scrotal vessels and nerves that's coming from posterior aspect to supply the area okay also uh, pierce the membrane so these are the structures that pierce the perineal membrane and you will find these in this is a topic for multiple choice questions. So remember these structures, please. Okay. Now, superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm. This is a coronal section to show you what I'm talking about. The perineal membrane or the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm is represented here. This is the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm. This is the urogenital diaphragm, the two perineae, deep profundus muscles, and the sphincter urethrae. And the superior layer of the, or superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm, it's less defined, it's attached to the pubic arches, and fuses laterally with the obturator. See, this is the obturator internus muscle, and it's covering fascia. Fuses uh, uh, laterally with the obturator fascia and posteriorly with the inferior fascia of the pelvic diaphragm. The pelvic diaphragm is the levator in eye. You remember that. This is the inferior fascia of pelvic diaphragm and superior fascia of pelvic diaphragm. Now, don't get lost here. The pelvic diaphragm differs from the urogenital diaphragm. The pelvic diaphragm is enclosed between two fascia. It's not our topic now. It was our topic before in the pelvis. Now our topic are the fascia that enclose the urogenital uh, urogenital diaphragm, which is the superior layer. See, it fuses with the inferior layer of the pelvic diaphragm and the perineal body. And the inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm as well posteriorly at the posterior edge. Of course, it's pierced by the urethra as you can see here now you are in oriented okay so again um, before i leave this uh, slide this is the superficial fascia 
This is the deep fascia, the inferior layer and the superior layer. And this is the pelvic fascia around the levator and eye muscle to be oriented. Okay, now this fascia, this arrangement of fascia divides the perineum into pouches or spaces. The superficial perineal space or pouch and the deep perineal space or pouch. The superficial perineal space is between the membranous layer of the superficial fascia and the perineal membrane, which is this area. It has the external genitalia in it. See, this is the superficial perineal pouch. The deep perineal space, deep perineal pouch, actually it's the one that occupied by the urogenital diaphragm. See, this is the deep perineal pouch that has the urethra trans traverses the pouch to open in the superficial part. See that? These are the beginnings of the, of the crudy of the penis, okay? And uh, uh, um, the beginning of the bulb of the uh, penis. They will all elongate and meet in the middle to form the shaft of the uh, penis. Now we have superficial perineal pouch and deep perineal pouch. Remember, it's not this area. This is the ischiorectal fossa. This is the ischiorectal fossa that we will be studying uh, later, okay? The ischiorectal fossa. Okay. Uh, uh, the muscles of the uh, uh, urogenital diaphragm in the males, uh, uh, we have the superficial transverse perineal muscles. They come from the, these muscles, come from the medial aspect of the ischial tuberosity, uh, go to the perineal body, and the superficial part of the external anal sphincter, and the beginning of the bulbospongiosus muscle. See, these are the two bulbospongiosus muscles. The, I'm talking about this muscle, the superficial transverse perineus muscle. You may not find this muscle in some people, maybe uh, absent. Okay, now this is in females. We will get to that, uh, we'll compare it to females later, but I put you this picture to just compare it. And remember that the bulbospongiosus is almost one piece in male, but it's two pieces in females. The bulbospongiosus muscle, two symmetrical uh, muscles that arise from a raphe in the midline, see that? Uh, they go to insert themselves in the dorsum of the corpus spongiosum of the penis. This is the corpus spongiosum. And the most anterior fibers extend to the corpora cavernosa of the penis. So they are attached to both corpus spongiosum and corpus cavernosum of the uh, penis. Maybe to aid in the erection uh, process by means of pulling on the fascia of the penis to compress the dorsal vein of the penis, which, uh, you know, impedes the blood return, venous return from the penis, and this will maintain erection in the penis. The action of the bulbospongiosus muscle helps to empty the urethra because it surrounds the beginning of the ure bulbous urethra. Uh, it's relaxed during micturition. This is a multiple choice question. Relaxed during micturition may help in erection, I told you, because they're attached to the corpora cavernosa as well. So they pull on the fascia and impede the venous return from the penis and they contract in ejaculation, rhythmic contractions to ejaculate the semen. Okay, this is the bulbo uh, spongiosus. The ischiocavernosus muscle on the sides here, uh, it covers the crudy of the penis uh, to, uh, attached to the ischiopubic ramus, the conjoined uh, ramus, and inserts in the crust or the crudy of the penis by uh, another aponeurosis like the corpus like the bulbus spongiosus, and it maintains erection by compressing the crust and leads to imp uh, you know impedance of the uh, venous return of the uh, penis. So it's to maintain uh, erection as well. Now uh, there is a triangle formed between the muscles. See this triangle between the ischiocavernosus laterally the superficial transverse perineal posteriorly and the bulbospongiosus medially. 
uh, okay, this is the triangle I'm talking about. And the contents of this triangle is the posterior scrotal nerve and vessels, C, coming traverses this triangle. Remember the perineal branch of the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve and the transverse, these are the transverse branches or transverse perineal uh, vessels and nerve, okay, traversing this triangle. Now the muscle we talked, the muscles we talked about are supplied by the perineal branch of the pudendal nerve is two, three, and four. Okay, you will be asked about this triangle and what traverses it. Remember that. It's all perineal branches. Muscles in the deep perineal pouch, um, uh, the, it's the urogenital diaphragm. I told you the urogenital diaphragm is the sphincter urethrae and the two, the two transverse uh, perinei profundus, or the deep transverse perinei. The deep transverse perinei arise from the medial aspect of the ischiopubic ramus, as you can see here. Uh, go to the perineal body and the deep part of the external anal sphincter, uh, 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 external anal sphincter and the sphincter uh, urethrae. The action is to fix the perineal body. Now the perineal body, it's a knot in the middle, uh, uh, fa uh, you know, fibromuscular tissue entangled together to, uh, it receives inser insertion and of different muscles and it, it's essential for the stability of the pelvic structures, the perineal body. Once it's cut like a faulty uh, maneuver in delivery, for example, faulty episiotomy leads to disastrous effects, you know, a series of prolapses in the pelvis. So the perineal body is very important. Now these are the transverse perineal profundus. The sphincter urethrae itself, it surrounds the membranous urethra, we're looking at the inferior aspect here, the perineal membrane removed. This is the sphincter urethrae, C surrounding the uh, urethra on its way to pierce the perineal membrane. The inferior fibers uh, attach uh, on the transverse perineal ligament to the back uh, on the perineal body and superiorly it's atta attached to the back of the pubis or the pubic cremae to encircle your, the urethra, C coming in this direction to encircle the urethra. The action of the sphincter urethra is to compress urethra when the bladder is full, so this is continence. So paralysis of the muscle is loss of continence. And it's relaxed during micturition. This is another MCQ, another multiple choice question. And it ejects the final drops of urine uh, at the end of micturition. Okay, so it compresses the urethra when the bladder is full for continence. It's relaxed during micturition and ejects the final drops of urine uh, at the end of micturition. The nerve supply by the perineal branch of the pudendal nerve. We saw the pudendal nerve branches from S2, 3, and uh, 4. This is the sphincter urethra. Uh, muscle. So we discussed the uh, 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 urogenital diaphragm, the sphincter urethrae, and the deep transverse perineal muscles. Now let's compare these to the uh, what's what's in the females. In the females, the same arrangement like the males, but the perineal membrane is less extensive because it's pierced by the vagina. Okay, traversed by the vagina, so it's less extensive than the male. Um, the SQ cavernosus are thinner. Uh, generally, the muscles in, in females are, you know, uh, smaller in size than males. The bulbus spongiosus has no raffae, has no midline raffae. It remains two muscles, okay, at the size of the vestibule of the vagina. They compress the vestibule of the vagina to act like a sphincter. It's a natural protection for the female against, you know, because this is an open orifice to the outside. So it keeps it uh, closed by compressing on the side of the vaginal uh, uh, vestibule. 
its action to constrict the vaginal orifice. The transverse perineae, uh, females have superficial transverse perineae, superficial and deep and profundus, and they are the same, and the superficial may be absent also in uh, females, and they have the same sphincter urethra, but it is the only sphincter uh, urethra in males, remember, because in, in, in females, I mean, because in males, remember, there was an additional sphincter urethra, it's the internal urethral sphincter at the neck of the urinary uh, bladder. So this concludes the talk about the fascia and muscles of the perineum. Uh, I hope you got the maximum benefit from this lecture and thank you very much for watching.